Okay, so um, on Canvas, there should be uh, something called the scanner darkly technique. Um, And I, I know you were talking about the summer class. If the class has a prerequisite, don't worry about it. The only one that has required prerequisite was the advanced class that we need to fix. Um, and I know that that has a problem. The other nice thing is there'll be an assistant in the class for Gene this summer. So I'm going to hire somebody to be in the room. So it's, it's usually gets very crowded in the summer class uh, if you take Gene's summer class because... Um, it's a transferable class, so you get a lot of San Jose State students who come and take that class, so it's probably going to be full. That's why I'll have an assistant in the room to help you, and she'll walk around. And Which class? It's called the typography, I think it's called, right? I think it's DM99. It's like two nights, two days a week for four weeks. That's it. It's, so it's only a few meetings, but um, it's kind of like long. It's like three hours a day or four hours a day, I think, something like that. But I have a, a really nice person who will be there to help out as well. So, so consider signing up. Um, sign up early because it will probably fill. Um, so here it is. It's called the Scanner Darkly. It's the second link on um, Canvas for this week. I think uh, let's go back. You'll see. Um, here, let's look. Uh, let's look at Canvas one more time. So we have, as you can see, whoosh. Can you imagine going back to January 30th? Woo. What a long time we've been together. Okay, and so then we came up last week. I, I did uh, a Wired Magazine card just one day because we missed day. And I'll put up the video um, in here as soon as I, uh, I... I don't think this is the video. I think this is the video from previous class. Yeah, this is this is not the video that we did last Tuesday, Monday. We're doing Monday, right? So I'll, I'll link up the video from last week. Again, this is a week of May 1st is today, May Day. So, um, And I know it says videos. Here's some videos from previous portrait ones. And then I know it says turn in your portrait December 15th. I guess it's passed. We'll have to change the date on that. I understand. But we'll, we'll, we got a couple weeks to, to finish. Don't worry. So uh, again, it's under here, the fun portrait technique right here. And if you click on that... Um, It'll take you to this link. It's called Scanner Darkly. If we click on it, we were looking at the video movie when we were coming in. And so this is a technique that has kind of this kind of look to it. Uh, the author of this, um, this technique um, goes through starting with a portrait of a picture, right? Starting with a picture. And then um, the key to doing this is to use the pen tool. Is all they're doing. Pencil tool, I'm sorry. They're using nothing but the pencil tool kind of the technique that you see with the uh, um, kind of either kind of this one <coughs> kind of looking this kind of this kind of technique okay kind of this kind of technique and so um, if you look at it um, they do mostly the pencil tool and the key here is they double click on the pencil tool and set the settings kind of like this so it's smooth. What they're looking for is when you're drawing with a pencil to give nice smooth and not very, um, you, want it, you want it to kind of be smooth. And so they talk about doing that and then outlining all the dark areas where, like, as you can see here, they're doing the eye, okay, and kind of outlining that. And so going through, and as you can see, outlining most of the areas that would be kind of a dark black contrast uh, um, along the edges of things so like the edge of the chin here or between the fingers here or you can see there's a black line that goes along the chin here a black line in the lips there as you can see then after you black outline everything you kind of left with something that looks like that so go through and black outline everything first then you're left with something like that then go back with the pen tool of course under the black areas not over the black areas but under the black areas you make another layer underneath as you can see they has black and then blues and then adding just again using just the pencil tool making shapes that just build upon the, uh, and it, it it looks easy but it's not I know it looks easy when you first look at this like oh man that, that's pretty easy uh, way till you start making objects it, it starts getting and then of course here's the final kind of look here 
Okay, so that's what we're going to talk. That's the, the one we're going to do today. So we're going to make a portrait today just like this. Okay, so um, uh, the first thing you want to do is find an image. I'm going to go and find a portrait of somebody. Um, sometimes I do my family. I probably should do my niece. She just got married in a couple weeks ago. Um, I've drawn her before. Or we could do somebody famous. Um, we could do um, maybe... Um, since he was in the scanner darkly, how about we do Woody Harrison? Or is that his name? Her Woody Woody Harrison? Woody Harrison? Is that his name? Let's see. Yeah, we could probably do one of them. Do anything? I didn't like Natural Born Killers. That was a little gruesome movie for me. Who liked Natural Born Killers? Some of us. No, it was a little, a little too much blood for me. But other than that, he's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Um... This one is kind of nice. I don't know. It's kind of. It looks difficult. I'm gonna go for it though. So I'm gonna uh, copy this image, and I'm going to paste it right into Illustrator. And I'm going to start, uh-oh, this is a different, this is a newer version of Illustrator. It's newer than the one you have here. So, again, um, we'll upgrade um, over the summer so that we have the newer version, uh, hopefully next semester or next fall. Uh, as you can see, you have um, a new kind of window. If you look, this is a newer version. Um, it's the same thing. It's just they have these little icons that represent uh, where you would say, fi you know, new, you know, whatever. Um, it has new saving techniques and things like that. Um, it kind of it's the same kind of settings where you got color. It's just they do it. But I'm going to do portrait right here, portrait. And uh, since I'm going to get it printed, I'm going to stick with the CMYK as the color mode. And I'm going to hit create. And again, it's the same kind of thing. Um, and as we move through, if you want, I could use my laptop so we can look at some of the new things that are in the newer version than the one that you have on the, your computer. Now, who has the latest version? All of you? Okay. There's some new things. And there's some different tools you might even notice. There's this tool right here. Uh, it's a racer tool. It's really not, it's not very useful for me. Um, but it, it does work. So. And the icons are a little bit different, as you can see over here and so on but they're really the same ones I just changed the icons and they they actually do have an eraser tool it's not really new and I'm gonna paste my Woody Harrison picture there he is and um, if I want I can make my artboard bigger or I can shrink Woody down if I want to fit in my artboard there we go okay so uh, how we use the scanner darkly technique is, of course, using the um, layers window. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of lock my uh, layer of my image so I don't mess with it. And then I'm going to start by um, making a new layer over top. And if you looked at the uh, example from uh, the handout or the website, they made one called Blacks, right? Because it was a black uh, line, so they make a new layer. And they call that layer blacks, like that. And they're going to add black objects. To add the black objects, they mostly use the pencil tool. The pencil tool is next to the shaper tool right here. It's this one right here. It's the pencil tool. And if you double click on the pencil tool, the, it has a fidelity now. It doesn't really have two options like it did. Um, but you want to do smoother, smoother as well as keep fill so it's going to fill it in with the black when you're done uh, I tend not to keep, turn on the keep selected um, because I want it to not be selected because if you draw it next to it it'll end up you know um, redrawing it sometimes and it, that gets kind of frustrating so again I I'm using a more smoother and less accurate and uh, a fill with new pencil stroke. I'm going to leave that so it fills it in. And of course, I'm going to use black as the color. So um, I'm going to hit OK. And I am going to use black as the color. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so 
What's that? Just fill, no stroke. And in the pencil options, if you double click on the pencil, you can say fill new pencil stroke. It'll fill it in. So again, here's sort of the technique. You go through where you think the black would be. So there's a nice big kind of black area here. And I'm just going to draw his eye first. And you get yourself a black line. You know, it's an object. Okay, so, you know, it's a little bit... Um, and again, you can go through and um, outline areas. That's all, all they're doing with the pencil tool. Might be nice if you had one of those tablets to go along for something like that. In addition, you can overlap the object to give yourself sort of a calligraphy kind of look. And what I'm talking about here is if I go across here like this and I go down around and then I come back across like that, you'll see that I get this line because I went across the line like that. And then, of course, lots of little lines. Again, you see it's smooth. It doesn't have a lot of objects to it. You can do really thin lines. Oops, this and I kind of messed up. If you mess up, the best thing to do is just to hit Command Z and start over I'd, instead of having to select it and delete it. Um, again, you can go and, and add just simple, simple shapes. And very fine, thin black lines is fine like that. Even very thin, fine things like that. And again, it looks kind of silly at first, but once you start putting them down and getting a lot of them there, the person's actually characteristics will come out. Um, I, I, I know it seems silly at first. It looks like he just got a black eye, doesn't it? Somebody punched him in a black eye. But it, eventually, once you start building up, you know, you might want to do a little bit here. Again, usually what I would do is go all the way around the outside kind of with a nice thin line here like that and then maybe even one right here for his hairline he doesn't have much hair does he no um, and then and you don't have to be perfect you can leave open gaps is nice so that the you know if you look you know you can leave open gaps like this is very nice so that you know block you know closing everything in, right? You want to leave little gaps so that the eye flows around things, okay? So don't don't have to do everything line-wise there. Again, you can do all the um all the way around. I know he has a beard here, but we can go through and and give ourselves a nice sort of line here. again and it doesn't have to be perfect and all you're trying to do is give yourself some nice sort of thin lines just simple lines like that is great again if you're doing a nose you can go all the way down and around don't be afraid to overlap things a little bit see it nice as you notice I went up and around and it gave me a nice curvy look right going up and around like that um, again not everything is dark needs to have that you know you, you want to give a, yourself a little bit of a, a look it's not everything that's dark because you're going to add more colors and shapes later anyways okay so i might you know this might be a brown and not total black there um, again i would do all the kind of look and feel here of something like that again you're using the black to highlight certain areas like that and you can do very quickly he might even give himself a little chin action there like that And it's all done with the pencil tool. No other real other 
other tools needed at this point. Maybe if I was doing the glint in the eye, I might use an object, that, not the pencil, maybe a circle, and then just blur it a little bit. But in most cases, you know, you're just using the pencil tool in this technique. It looks kind of evil, doesn't he? I know he looks evil. Don't stress yet. We'll get to making him look better. Again, uh, going around the whole outside of his hair here. And, of course, don't be afraid to do clothes. Okay, so pretty much outlined everything. Um, I'm sure we could add a couple more black somewhere. Um, maybe one right here. There we go. Uh huh. The pen? The what do you mean by pen? The pen tool. Uh, of course, you got to click, 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 click. And the pencil, you don't have to click. You just hold the mouse down, right? So that, that yeah, it's doing them for you. Okay, this eye needs a little bit more. Yeah, you have to go back. Yeah, like if I'm doing the shape, I go all the way around and then I come all the way back. Are you going around and then it fills it in across? Yeah, go all the way around and then go all the way back. Okay, so as you can see, I pretty much have all my blacks and uh, he might not quite look like Woody there, but he's getting close. You know what I mean? You got to add a little detail, but... Um, you know, you can see it's kind of gestural, if that's a term, I think. It would be a good term to describe it. You know, you have these kind of smooth, kind of strokey kind of um, shapes using just that. 
Yeah, kind of cartoonish, like the scanner darkly, I guess that's the whole point of the thing. So after you're done with that, you can actually go and um, turn the blacks off if you want, and or lock them, and then make a new layer, and have that underneath it. So again, we're going to do color, a color layer next, okay? So, and if you saw before, um, you can actually make yourself a color swatch. You could either make swatches or if you saw the, the one student that um, was doing the, the sample, we could probably make a bunch of color swatches over here and uh, make ourselves our own color palette kind of thing. There we go. And so to make yourself a color palette, you could use the eyedropper and suck up a color. Um, select another one, use the eyedropper, suck up another color. Um, select another object, use the eyedropper, suck up another color. Use the eyedropper, suck up another color. Ooh, that's a really bright one there. Use the eyedropper, suck up another color. Get myself a little brown action in there. Uh, use the eyedropper. Let's get some gray action in there. Use the eyedropper. Suck up another color. And so on. So uh, then the next technique would be to uh, kind of follow the same um, way that we were doing it. In that um, using again the pencil tool, kind of building up. So, um, you know, you can use, um, kind of start building colors. So this might be one color right there. And of course, this is more of a dark color. So, um, oh, when I do this color, you might want to keep selected now so that you can easily. So this time I'm going to actually, if you want to color them, ahead of time or afterwards I meant after you draw them if you double click on the pencil and say keep selected so when I draw a shape I don't have to select it then I can use my eyedropper and select a color right so if I am drawing with the pencil tool now and I'm going over um, colors here I can then if you keep selected you can just go to your eyedropper and suck up another color there we go. And then go with the eyedropper again. And suck up a color. And then eyedropper again. And again, using the fidelity is, is you know, this, this um, you know, smooth option. As you can see, the objects are all kind of smooth. And so overlapping objects, um, you know, kind of like that. And you can do more if you want. You can overlap some more. Yeah, remember, you don't have to do... Oh, I lost my color swatches now. Zoomed in a little bit. Actually, let's make this one that color. And then this one... the brightest color there we go and then of course you don't you're not stuck with just those colors you can go through and add some more and then um, let's make this a little bit medium and then let's move that uh, object to range you can move backwards And then, of course, you can do some fine detail um, with the pencil tool. I mean, I, I mean, we can go in and just add ourselves a nice sort of brownish color here. And where's my color? I lost my color already. There's my dark brown. Or you can actually just start sucking up colors straight from the portrait here, you know.
Oops, it has both of them selected. Yeah, it's a problem when they're they're I delete them. Delete. There we go. Let's try again. So um let's see. I wanna go down around. And let's make that one medium. And then let's make this one a little bit darker. There we go. And then let's make this one. And you know it takes some time. I mean it's it's just using this There's a lot of different oh, didn't want to do that. Be careful uh, if you draw over something that's already still selected, it'll think you want to And, um, you know, Lost that one, didn't I?
Then you can always hide things if you can't see what's underneath it. You can hide something. Let's add some. And of course, let's add some glint. Glint. And then, okay, you get the idea. Let's see what it looks like. And it's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work, but it, just by doing that, you can see. It starts coming together. Okay, so a solid colors, not a lot of texture. Um, you know, his eyes starting to get. It's not. It's starting. Look how many objects I have in there. A lot of little ones, little tiny ones, kind of overlapping each other. Um, you know, look at this one again. The one that we were just looking at. This one with the. Where is it? Oh. This one. This one's using a lot of solid colors, I think. Now you can see all the different objects overlapping each other. You see them all? There's a bunch of objects all overlapping each other. None of them are blurred? Nope. None of them are blurred. Not in this one. Okay, but it turned out pretty nice. Right? So. Uh huh. You mean as far as. So, uh, to make. So that if you looked at this, this student again, she had the little swatch boxes over here, right? So, if you want to make yourself a little swatch box, um, again, it's easy just by turning on the portrait and then making yourself some rectangles and then just using the eyedropper and sucking them up. Yeah, you can make it in. Remember in the fruit one, we did little swatch palette, right? Do you remember doing that in the swatches? And yeah. this, if you want to do it using swatches in the swatch palette, if you go to swatches, you can make your own swatch palette by. I, I usually make a new folder, new group, new color group. This would be face. How about that? We call it face. And then uh, you can suck up a color, and then drag it into the group there. Suck up a color. Drag it into the group there. Oh, make sure you put it in a folder so it stays together with this group. Suck up a color, drag it into the group. So you could do that that technique as well, either by you know using boxes over here or something like that. And then um, you know to do hair. Let's say we want to do the um, you know hair here. Again, I would probably you know make some kind of shapes. And then, uh, oh, I didn't want blue, but let's put, uh, there we go, something like that. And then let's hide that for a moment. Let's hide it. And then let's make a couple more shapes in there. Always following kind of the contour. There we go. And let's make that a little brighter. And so we have two here. And then uh, for, for the hair, I would probably maybe use the paintbrush and use a very um, thin brush. So I would suck up a color. Let me deselect this first. And suck up a hair color and then probably use a brush and might use the rough brush, right? The, this one, the run that's kind of rough. And then I would uh, maybe real, make it really thin, like a 0.5. You can go below one point. And then you can see you can get sort of this brushy. So 
I know it so I it would take a long time but you could go through there and make a whole bunch of brushes change the color if you want and then of course what makes hair look like hair is contrast so then put in some really dark it would be tough but yeah, that doesn't look very good but um, I've seen students do it much better than I could it would have to be thin thinner is what the the key here you could go really thin huh um, yeah that, that never works right I would avoid trying to do a pattern or using the um, I've had students try and use the uh, symbol and do the symbol brush for hair that never works right either um, it's best to do it just by hand and let me see if I can make this thinner yeah maybe really thin lines it's hard. Hair is tough. Pick somebody that doesn't have any hair. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even attempt to do. Woody doesn't need a beard, does he? He doesn't need a beard. So I will show you how to make um, um, your own brush, okay? And to, to make your own brush. Uh, as well as how to find brushes online and download them and use them. Um, think of contrast. If you're going to use this technique, the contrast, again, is, is probably the best way to go. You can see nice contrasty look. I like my eye. It's not, not too bad. My eye is starting to come along. It just takes time, that's all. And it's called the scanner darkly technique. Okay, how about we uh, stop here and then uh, maybe some people want to show what they've done. Anybody want to show uh, uh, one of their assignments we didn't see last week? Where we saw it? Anybody improve any other assignments? I changed the dates, I think, to, to, to later on, right? Some of them I did.